Hello everybody, Robert Rambles here and welcome to World of Warcraft Classic. Today we are checking things out on a Tauren Druid. So let's read a little bit about a Tauren friends, they are part of the Horde. Always the Tauren strive to preserve the balance of nature and heed the will of their goddess, the Earth Mother. Recently attacked by murderous centaur, the Tauren would have been wiped out, save for a chance encounter with the orcs, who helped defeat the interlopers. To honor this blood debt, the Tauren joined the Horde, solidifying the two races' friendship. A couple racial abilities, they can stomp stunning nearby enemies. They have higher maximum health, their herbalism skill is increased, and they're resistant to nature damage. And then the class we're trying today is Druid. Druids live in a state of unparalleled union with nature. Tightly bound to the plant and animal kingdoms, they are natural shapeshifters and so they know firsthand the abuse visited upon their brethren. In consequence, despite their numbers, druids tend to be wary, reclusive, and difficult to spot. Few outsiders have plumbed the depths of their secrets. Alright, let's uh, go ahead and get right in. Once a nomadic people, the Tauren roamed the endless plains of the Barrens, hunting the mighty Kodum. Scattered across the land, the wandering tribes were united only by their common hatred for their sworn enemy, the marauding centaur. Seeking aid against the centaur, the great chieftain Cairn Bloodhoof befriended the savage orcs who had recently journeyed to Kalimdor. With the orcs' help, Cairn and his tribe were able to drive back the centaur and claim the grasslands of Mulgore for their own. Upon the windswept mesa of Thunder Bluff, Cairn built a refuge for his people. Over time, the scattered tribes united under a single banner. Though the noble Tauren are peaceful in nature, the rites of the Great Hunt are venerated as the heart of their spiritual culture. As a tribesman of Mulgore, you must test your skills in the wild and prove yourself in the Great Hunt. Awesome. So a little bit of background. When I first played World of Warcraft Vanilla 13 years ago, the very first time that I created a character and logged in was actually on a Tauren Druid. Uh, and this zone, and at the time, the beauty of it and the enormity of it, really captured me just something about the peacefulness of it and i liked the druid's abilities it really drew me into the universe so this kind of brings back fond memories of the first times that i spawned into world of warcraft uh, of course i was probably playing on a computer that got about 12 frames a second if that <laughs> so things are much different but let's go ahead and see what we're going to do here at camp in Arashe. How may I aid you? Greetings, and welcome to Camp Narashe. News of your arrival spreads quickly among the tribe. The hunt begins. You have a promising air about you, and will prove yourself to the tribe. Perhaps someday soon you will be welcomed into the great city of Thunderbluff. But before that can happen, you must prove yourself to my father, Chief Hawkwind. Up here on Red Cloud Mesa, we pride ourselves on keen hunting skills. Tauren hunt out of necessity and for sport. Our supply of meats has run low, and we require feathers for clothing. Hunt the nearby plane striders and prove yourself by resupplying the village. Alright, so we're going to hunt some plane striders. Resupply our little village here. And what a quaint little village it is. Let's just give a look around. I'm not assuming there's going to be any more quests for us right now. But let's run out here. Get a view of the area. Here's our little starting zone, the Red Cloud Mesa area. Which is a part of Molgor. And now starting off on the Druid, a couple of things. We have Wrath. This is a ranged spell, so 30 yard range, 1.5 second cast, causes 12 to 14 nature damage to the target, like so. I need more mana. 
And then we're just gonna melee him down the rest of the way. A couple of settings we need to change that I always change upon getting onto a new character. Again, if you are new to the channel, we do playthroughs that are add-on free, but I do change a few things in the Blizzard default UI just to get things where I like them on the screen. And then of course we always want to turn auto loot on and get some action bars going. Oops. Now if we actually save those things, that would be even better. Now eventually on a druid we're going to be, you might have heard, uh, shape shifting in the description. But right now we just have some nature spells at our disposal and that's what we're going to use for a little while. We also get a heal right away. Healing touch heals a friendly target for 37 to 51. Which right now is basically all of our health. So if we get into a bind and we need to save ourselves, we have a heal we can throw down if we have the mana for it. We don't have a huge mana pool at this point. There's another quest down here. So I guess we should check this out while we're fighting the plane striders in the area. This one from Great Mother Hawkwind. So Hawkwind is the chieftain, part of the family here. Ah, I've been expecting you. A humble task. I have traveled many paths through life, and these old legs lack the vigor they once had. I can still perform my duties to the tribe. Sometimes it just takes an old woman a little longer to do the task. But you look like an eager druid. Let's put some of that youthful vitality to the test. Take a water pitcher from the well and bring it to my son, the chief, in Camp Narashe. Remember that even the most humble task can gain the recognition of the elders. Very well. Alright, let's grab one of these water pitchers. I don't know why they would task the oldest lady in the village with fetching water from the well. Like, traditionally you give that job to a bunch of youths. You know, kind of weird. Maybe she's just trying to prove herself. She's still useful. Now as far as what weapons we can equip on the druid, that I don't know. I don't know if we can only equip stabs or if we can equip fist weapons later, uh, possibly daggers. I really don't know because there's different things we can do on the druid. The druid can shapeshift into either a bear or a cat. The bear functions more like a warrior tank where they don't necessarily do a lot of damage but they can take a lot of hits. And the cat form acts more like a rogue where you get access to stealth abilities, to backstab like abilities, and you have combo points and an energy meter, just like the rogue does. And obviously the cat is going to focus more on DPS. And then you have the spells like we're using right now. So you have a casting talent tree, where you can continue to do things like use wrath, we'll get uh, spells like moonfall, Moonfire, and possibly a couple others. It's too far away. Or we could heal. Obviously, you can see we get healing spells. So the druid is really a, jack, a jack of all trades. We could do DPS as a cat. We could do DPS from a distance as a caster. We could heal, or we could tank as a bear. So it's pretty exciting. If you're looking for a class with a lot of versatility, where you can change it up depending on the situation you're in, or if you're the kind of person who just likes to 
change playstyles but isn't really into playing a lot of alts, then the druid could definitely be for you. There's a lot of versatility in the class. Now, granted, in, in classic, it's not the best, most well-balanced class for endgame. So, you know, you just have to have no, your goals and know what they are. I don't know if there are people who are really focused on Endgame and Classic. I'm, I guess I'm sure that there are. Alright, we have all the plane striders we need. We had to come quite a ways to get it. I love how just open the rolling hills of the area are initially. The hills add some texture that places like Duratar don't have. So do the trees. But it's still kind of an open area. You have a little bit of a sense of exploring, though, because sometimes you can't see what's over the next rise. And that's pretty cool. This has always been one of my favorite starting zones. Not that it's extremely exciting or anything, I just love the aesthetic of it. Right into the tree. Almost. And so right away we should look because we have War Stomp, which is a great ability. It's a stun and it's only on a two minute cooldown. Stuns up to five enemies within eight yards for two seconds. So anybody who's casting, or we just pull too many and they're dealing too much damage, we can do that. Very useful. Let's deliver the water to, to the chief. Meet him. Oh. You look as though you have returned from the plains. Do you have any word from Great Mother Hawkwood? Yeah, we have word. Why do you let your, your grandmother go out there and collect water? You carried this pitcher back at the Great Mother's bidding, I see. Your willingness to help others and provide for the Toran camp of Narashe leads me to believe... You would make the tribe proud in Thunderbluff someday. Your willingness to perform a humble task for the Tauren of Narashe and your eagerness to learn our noble traits. I believe one day you will be heralded in Thunderbluff as a druid of greatness. Before that, you must embark on the rites of the Earth Mother, of which there are three. The first test is the rite of strength. Travel to Seer Greytongue and tell him Chief Hawkwind has sent you. You will find the Seer's abode directly to the south of Camp Narashe, tucked away in the hills. Alright, so the first rite is the rite of strength. Be careful. We have to graduate from the valley here. Prove ourselves. And now let's turn in the hunt begins. This should get us introduced to our trainer, I would think. Well met. Providing meat and feathers for the tribe is the first step in pro proving yourself as the hunter before the chief. The Torn of Narashe, thank you. You show much promise. Yeah, we've heard that. Uh, a verdant note. Just a moment ago, a messenger was looking for you. I believe she was sent by the druid trainer Gart. If this note is from Gart, I wouldn't take long in reading its contents. Farewell. All right, and what else do you what have? Brings you here? The hunt continues. A Torn skilled in the ways of the hunt knows that his prey is not for mere trophy. The beasts of the plains provide us with a means of survival. You will make quite an impression on the elders if you can bring back some highly valued mountain cougar pelts. You can find the beasts lurking in the hills to the south. Our children need clothing and our tents need mending. Uh, children? What children? Do they come out as full grown tauren? Because I've never seen any tauren children. Go in peace. I challenge you, any of you, to find me an in game model of a tauren child from either. Vanilla, classic, or retail. I bet they don't exist. I could imagine them existing and looking really cool, but I bet they don't. Peace, friend. And here's our verdant note. I'd like to read this first, actually, even though I know it's going to be inscribed on that weird background that they love to use for notes, and we're going to have a hard time reading it. Yep. Let's see. The spirits came to me in my dreams last night. They told me of your coming and that it would be my task to aid you. We have much to go over in our short time together. Discussions about nature, the spirits, the Earth Mother, and even Night Elves. 
but I will save the lessons for your arrival, and I will do all that is in my power to ensure you are ready for the trials ahead. May wisdom guide you. I will be waiting. Here we what are. Brings you, here? you have arrived. This is good. Our ancestors' spirits have become restless throughout Mulgore and beyond, but I cannot tell why. It will forever be your duty to learn to listen to nature's spirits and act as their avatar. Be mindful of that. Though we share a common bond, do not expect much welcome from the Night Elves. Their pride still limits their sight. But that is none of our concern. The teachings of the Earth Mother are all you must concern yourself with, and I will teach what I teach you what I know as you grow in wisdom. Return to me often. You will find that the Earth Mother grants incredible abilities to those who are most dedicated. Ancestors. So I think it's that the Night Elves were the original Druids, or are also Druids, and they're on the Alliance. And the Torrin are Druids, and the Torrin are peaceful, but we're on the Horde. So although we would potentially be friends because we both believe in different parts of the goddess Elune, so the Night Elves worship Elune, and the Torrin worship the Earth Mother, and half of Elune is the Earth Mother. It's two halves of Elune. We won't get into it too much. There's plenty of good lore videos out there that Noble does. But basically we worship the same god as the Night Elves and draw our druidic powers from the same source. But we can't be friends yet because it's classic and we're Horde versus Alliance, you know. Alright, let's see. The hunt continues. We need pelts and then right to the Earth Mother we have to head south. Tucked away in the hills. However, it would be great to learn some new abilities. Mark of the Wild. This is going to be a buff. We shall meet again. Increases the friendly target's armor by 25. So we'll just keep that up at all times. And I don't think anybody else has any quests for us. Let's go ahead and for something special? vendor everything we have. Now, as a druid, we're going to be wearing leather. And we should probably start equipping some random bits goodbye let's head south first i think i see the hut there in the distance hilariously back when i played this originally and you know 13 years ago there was no way we had a view distance to be able to see that hut it was like you could see a few trees ahead and that was the limit of your view distance on the PC that I had at least if you wanted the game to run at all it's interesting that now you can just look at a distance and say oh yeah there it is there's the giant totem that they meant to be a landmark for me that I simply couldn't see because I couldn't turn my view distance up high enough to see it <laughs> very interesting experience It's not often that you get to experience the same game at two different points in your life. Especially, you know, not remastered, but just kind of... Obviously the way that it looks now is not ever going to be the way that it looked then. And the way that it runs now is not ever going to be the way that it ran then. But I can still remember how it ran and how it looked then. It's just been a very interesting experience for me. This has drawn my attention to it more so because, like I said, this was the first zone that I ever played in. I'm the first class that I ever played in. Uh, now, we didn't end up leveling the Druid back then. We went with a couple other classes and ended up on a warrior. It was a Tauren warrior, though, so I fell in love with the zone and the class, or the race, enough to, when I picked my main, it was a Tauren warrior. And his name was Merith, and he looked uh, a little bit like this, actually. That was on the Dalaran server. Alright, we've got a couple of pelts on our way here. I'm assuming these guys are... Oh, they're not aggressive. I was just kind of assuming they were aggressive, but they're not. They are, however, level 3. The 
the drop rate's pretty consistent and there's quite a few of them so I'm not worried about finding enough to hunt down I don't remember when we get our shape-shifting forms, if it's before level 10 or if we have to wait till level 10 when we unlock our talents. Speaking of leveling, there's level 3. Let's make our way over here. Clearly there was an easier way up the shorter hill here, but it's okay. Seer Greytongue. Chief Hawkwind sent you? Embarking on the rights of the Earth Mother is no small task. The rights of the Earth Mother are steps a young Tora needs to take to gain respect in Thunderbluff. First, you must pass the Rite of Strength. In this test, you must prove your bravery by slaying enemies of the tribe. Bristlebacks of the Bramble Blade Ravine to the east are encroaching on our tribal lands. They ambush our hunting parties and steal from the village by dark. Show your valor by slaying these villains and return to the chief in Cap Narashe with their belts as proof of your deeds. Alright, so kill Bristleback and Bram in Brambleblade Ravine. At least when the Torrent have to go kill things, they try to make it seem like it's you're doing a good thing. They say, hey, they've been raiding us, they're attacking your hunting parties, go take care of this. Whoa. On the Forsaken, they were like, hey, we have a new plague, we want you to go poison these people to test it for fun. And you're like, oh, okay, so I'm an evil asshole. But on the Torrent, you get a different vibe. Obviously, the vibe you get from what you're doing depends only on what zone you're in and what quest uh, givers you're talking to. Because as the player, you don't really get any choice except for where you're going to take quests from. And it's not going to be all sunshine and rainbows on the Horde side, I'll tell you that. You, you sometimes find yourself doing despicable deeds just to complete a quest, but uh, killing some bristlebacks that are attacking hunting parties, I'm okay with that. All these cougars everywhere. Cougars all around, guys. Alright, but, where is this place? To the east. Even if we blow all of our mana on Wrath, we still can't get it down. Uh, before he gets to us, but the good thing about Wrath is it is a fast cast time. It's only 1.5 seconds That means that if we're getting hit in melee and trying to use it, we're not going to get as much knockback on our spell distance there we can see the bristleback ravine another thing that back in the day there's no way you would have been able to see all of this it's an amazing view that we have and it's one that we should all appreciate because most consumer PCs 13 years ago wouldn't run the game anything like this obviously we were operating in totally different resolutions I will say that WoW is a game that has aged very gracefully. To be able to play it 13 years later and still have parts of it look beautiful, uh, that's really saying something about the art style that was used and how it is kind of a timeless art style. I would love to get the improved character models in the Classic. I know there are people who are all about no changes to Classic. I'm not one of those people. 
I think that the core mechanics of Classic are what make the game. The systems that are running the game, those and the world are what make it. I think that things like graphics and spell effects are just like flavors, like sprinkles on top of something. There's not a lot of actual content to the sprinkles as far as calories. They're just there because they taste good and they look good. Uh, and I think visuals and spell effects are the same thing. I'm out of I don't think it would hurt Classic to have a toggle where we could just see our own advanced, the, the more high resolution character models and animations, as well as spell effects. This was remarkably brought to my attention on the Shaman, because the Lightning Bolt spell today is so much cooler than the Lightning Bolt spell in Classic, that it was just really evident that having those upgraded visuals, you know, would be good for some people like me. Who are not all about no changes. I think like I already am playing an add-on free playthrough. All of my playthroughs are add-on free. I just I just like the higher resolution character models. Well we have all of our pelts. Now we just gotta get all the way over here to this Bristleback Ravine. Brambleblade Ravine. Where we will fight Bristlebacks. These Battle Boar are aggressive. So if we're gonna make our way through here, we need to go around the outside of them and kinda be careful. You might have noticed that I've also turned off the floating names and the V-Bars. And I just have been finding that that immerses me a little bit more in the world and I have to pay attention more to what's going on around me. It also just looks visually cleaner. I've been staring at V-Bars and floating names for, you know, over a decade, so... When we're targeting it and we're fighting it, it's gonna show up, we can't do anything about that. But the rest of the time, we don't need to see it. We just get to see the creatures in their environment without their names floating above their heads, and I appreciate that. And like I said, we just have to pay more attention, which adds another layer of complexity and challenge to the game, in my opinion. Which, let's face it, it could, it could really stand to have that extra layer of difficulty and complexity sometimes. Even if the challenge comes just because we've disabled a setting that is supposed to make our lives easier. It's totally fine. All right, let's uh, let's investigate this cave, I guess. This might just take us through to a different area. Interesting. Oh, here we go. They're all hiding out back here on the other side of the ravine. Let's get a good look at these things. Bristleback Quillbores, we fought you somewhere in the world before. At least they don't run away. We're collecting their belts and not, like, their heads. I really appreciate that as well. I don't like it when quests have me, like, collect 12 boar heads or some really weird shit like that. Because, it A, it doesn't make sense to me, and B, it's pointlessly gruesome. Like, things like claws and teeth, I get as trophies, to some extent. Like, taking their belts or bandanas, I get. When it's like, go collect 10 raptor heads, I'm like, mm -hmm. Where are we putting 10 bloody raptor heads? Ooh, look at that. If you have seen any of my other playthroughs, you'll know that I think that getting an, an extra bag on your first couple of levels is really good luck. And as you can see, it's really essential because we're filling up inventory space really fast. And you need to be able to sell everything you loot. So you really don't want to run out of space in your inventory while you're out in the field. A lot of your money is going to come from vendoring the trash that you pick up. And money is not always easy to come by in Classic, especially if you're me and you're lazy about working the auction house to your advantage. That was a nice nature resist there. Just going to finish him off with our stick. Not enough mana. Ooh, 
we need quite a few belts. Twelve belts. That's that's no small number of belts. One thing I kind of also wish that still hasn't come to fruition even in modern WoW is that I wish I could cast with my weapon out. I don't like for casters how the weapons just be kind of become stat sticks, especially like even on like things like holy paladins. Can't my weapon just stay in my hand and can't the weapon become a part of the animation? Why would I want to put my staff back in my back holster every single time I wanted to cast a spell? It seems like at that point I would not even want to carry the damn staff with me. And then I gotta pull it out when I want to attack, you know? It just makes more sense for my weapons to stay in my hands. If I'm casting magic. Unless something about the magic requires that you use your hands in a certain pattern, which I've never really gotten that vibe from any of the spells in WoW. I could be wrong. These guys sure don't have a high drop rate for like a pretty early on quest. No they don't. And I feel like we're gonna get sent back here to fight more of them so I'm kind of like... I'm kind of at a point where, like, how many of these guys do I fight before I go back? Look at this guy just resisting everything we do. What we need is for the drop rate to drastically pick up for us. Because our kill rate's kind of slow on this character at the moment. Especially with all these resists that they're getting. They're getting incredibly lucky. With, I wonder if they have a high natural nature resistance. Just for being Quillbore. need Moonfire or like one more spell to help us out. I feel like we can go back and learn it, but that would mean coming all the way back out here. Which might be worth it. We might get a few more than we might if we might hurt back. Uh, see if we can learn some more spells and maybe get some more water. I feel like we just need more water to drink between fights at this point already. Yeah, it seems like we're just kind of low on everything. Low on damage, low on mana. There's our level. Let's fight a couple more of these guys, then we will hearth back. Unless the drop rate just shoots to the roof. I wonder if the drop rate is associated with our level. Like, if we're a little bit under level, will it drop less? And if then we gain a level, will it drop more? I don't really know the answer to that, if anybody does. He needs more mana. I mean, what can we say? Humorously, I remember my first experiences in this little area just getting annihilated by these guys. Like, pulling extra guys getting killed by pulling too many, just having all kinds of problems with them. 
And it's like, they're the same guys, but 13 years of experience with the mechanics of the game just makes it a little bit more manageable than when you have no idea what to expect. I do remember having um, Earth Grab, or Earth Bind, while fighting these guys, so I bet we can learn that. All that's going to do is root them in place so they can't run up to us. Obviously, if we're out of mana, rooting them in place is not going to help. Because we're going to need to, like, hit them anyway. So we'll see how useful Earth Grab is when we get it. You're aggressive. I should probably, like, just clear you out of here. We are curving that wrath. Just curving it. Yeah, we know. Oh, you're a respawn. Hello there, respawn. Let's do that for a second. Literally for one second. Why is he not dead? Well, this has kind of been not so great. I don't know why this guy respawned so quickly, but he sure did. It's a good thing we have our healing spell. Otherwise, this probably would not have gone okay. Yeah, these guys are all respawning, I think. Like, incredibly close to us. Much closer than I would prefer. I know I said we were going to hearth out of here, but now we're just going to stay and finish this up. The drop rate did go up, and then we were forced to fight like a bunch at once, so... And they've respawned behind us, so we can just turn around and get the rest that we need. Without having to venture too much more deeply into this place. I don't want both of them. I only want one at a time. Let's grab this guy while he's close. He had a lot of stuff he was carrying. I should mention this because some of you guys will probably notice it, but I am coming down with yet another cold. It's been a pretty awesomely terrible winter here in Kansas City, Missouri today. It's like 8 degrees outside when the normal temperature for this time of year is like 45. It's snowing and icing. It's uh, been pretty terrible and it's been pretty terrible for illnesses for me as well. I usually only get sick once or twice a year, uh, but this year it's felt like the winter has been back to back cold or flu. guy's level 5, he's a little bit tougher than the ones we've been fighting so far. Basically means he just has a, has a crap ton of health. One more belt. Come on, Quillbore. You know you have a belt on you. Nope. No belt. His pants must be falling off this morning. Isn't it the worst feeling when you get to work or wherever you're going and you, you realize that you forgot to put a belt on? And that it's just not quite right? That's like one of the most annoying feelings. 
far as stupid inconvenient feelings go. Though it could be I'm, I'm the only one who feels that way about belts. I just need to have one on. There are belt loops. It needs a belt. Oh, look at this. That's some cool cave art. I don't really know what it means or what it's showing. Harpies? Is it showing harpies? Some kind of flying creature? I don't know. Well, now they're not respawning quite so fast, and we seem to have slaughtered the majority of them. Here's one. We only need one more belt, so... This could happen any minute, or it could be like five more minutes till it happens. Yeah, it's looking like the five more minute option. There we go. Alright, on that note, let's hearth back. Ooh, how's that for a quick change of scenery? Greetings. Alright, here are your cougar pelts for the children's clothes and the tent repairs. The Torn of Narasa, I thank you for these provisions. With your skill and the ways of the hunt, you will surely be revered in Thunderbluff someday. Let's grab the leather bracers. Leather is what we're going to wear as a druid, both now and later. Leather is the only type of gear we will ever wear as a druid. Uh, both now and later. We're going to have to sell our inventory before we can even take this quest. I think. Well, either way, yeah. let's... Either way, let's sell all of our junk. Alright. Now we can take this quest. Peace, friend. The Battle Boars. The Battle Boars of Brambleblade Ravine to the east are encroaching on our tribal hunting grounds. They are trained to be malicious by the black bristleback quill boars with whom we are at war. Go and slay the vile creatures and bring back some snouts and flakes so that we can make stew for our young. See, killing animals and bringing back their parts makes sense when you're going to eat them. Not when you're just collecting heads. Like we've had to do before. So we are going to go back out and fight the battle boars. Goodbye. That we're in that area. Which tells me we're probably also going to go back to fight more of them just in general. How may I aid you? Uh, let's see. I have heard of you, newcomer. Perhaps it is you that will help us where others have failed. We tore and have carved a home out of this land. But not without cost. The bristleback quill boars of Bramblebade Ravine, led by Chief Sharp Tusk, Thorn Mantle have made our lives difficult with their continued war against us. I charge you to bring me the chief's head. He will be found in the ravine to the east. So she just wants us to go kill the chief of those uh, Bramble Blade. Bristleback. Bramble Bristle Bristlebacks. You can tell that I'm having a fun time with all the pronunciations. What brings you here? You have passed the first test of the rites of the Earth Mother. The tribe will be proud. We can take a one-handed mace or a two-handed staff. I don't... We can't equip shields. So I don't know why I would want a one-hander and we can't dual wield. We're going to take the two-handed staff. Let's see. Rites of the Earth Mother continued. For you to continue with the rites of the Earth Mother, you must pass two more tests. It is time for you to broaden your experience. Travel to Bloodhoof Village and seek out Chief Blaine, Bane Bloodhoof, son of Karn. There you may continue your journey and earn the acceptance of the elders of Thunder Bluff. Take this totem to Bane. He will recognize my carvings and help you on your path. Follow the road out of Camp Narashe and travel with haste. So we're gonna meet uh we're gonna meet Bane. Bane is a huge character today in today's lore. Spoiler alert, his dad Karn, uh, he doesn't make it past, uh, shoot, was it Mists? 
Pandaria? Go in. I don't remember what expansion, but uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to meet Bane way back in Classic here. And he's hanging out over in Bloodhoof Village. That's going to be our next destination, but clearly we're going to have to go back back out to the Bramble Blade Ravine to fight Bristleback Quillbores. Look at that, I got it all that time. Uh, and we're going to do that next time. Right now we're going to take a break. We're pretty close to level 4. Four or level five. Let's see if we have anything new to trade, though. All right, Moonfire. That's awesome. Rejuvenation. That's excellent. Okay, so Moonfire. This is going to be instant cast spell. Burns the enemy for seven to nine arcane damage, and then an additional twelve arcane damage over nine seconds. So it does a little bit of upfront damage, and then it deals some more damage over time. So, 7 and 9 up front, and then 12 more damage over 9 seconds. And then we got, um... I thought we got something else. Ah, uh, I've uh, been expecting you. Rejuvenation is going to be our Heal Over Time spell. So, this is an instant cast, so we have Healing Touch. We could heal ourselves for 49. We also have Rejuve instant cast and it's going to heal 8 damage every 3 seconds and it's going to last for 12 seconds and you can see it just ticks every 3 seconds we get that 8 for 12 seconds so that's something we can throw up while we're in combat that's really going to just help keep us alive um, the druid can be pretty undefeatable uh, when played correctly so yeah pretty exciting I think that uh, when we come back, we'll head over to the ravine, take care of that, and then we'll be headed uh, to Camp Bloodhoof. So let me know what you guys think of the Druid and of the Torrent starting area. Always fun to try something new. This has been one that's requested. I think eventually maybe we'll check out uh, Feral and do some shapeshifting. But let me know what you guys think. As always, I appreciate the support. It means a lot to me. If you like the video, giving us a thumbs up would make the YouTube algorithm happy. And if you do want to see more content, either in this series or other wild videos, consider subscribing and ringing the bell. Other than that, again, it's great to have you guys here. Take care, and we'll see you again soon. Bye now.